issues are like um, involve different types of uh, sleep disorders. Um, they involve not only, you know, uh, patients with SMA and also other neuromuscular disorders. It can be extended to other neuromuscular disorders. Uh, they are weak in the thorax and the muscles uh, in the thorax. So during the daytime, uh, you are aware of that particularly, and then you can just make an, an extra effort. At nighttime, kind of a lot of your system shut down. And then that's when you have more possibilities of having like impact in your breathing because you are unconscious, right? So that is why it's very important for us as physicians when every time that we come our patients uh, to our clinic to ask these questions because sometimes the kids I come up, uh, you know, with mom, I'm tired during the day. There's something that's not going the same way. And this is for the older patients with SMA. Um, and for the youngers, we really have to be very proactive in the sense of, you know, having like a pulmonology on board as a neurologist. This is a multidisciplinary effort. And, uh, but the symptoms that usually come and or we should be asking for are the ones addressing hypoventilation during the night. Those are headaches in the morning when you wake up. Uh, we usually ask that the patient wakes up several, several times during the day because that could be an indirect uh, manifestation of um, apnea, okay? And um, also tiredness. So like uh, the patient required to have like frequent naps during the day or they are not performing as well as school. So that is something that should um, come up. Weight gain um, and weight loss. Those, uh, the weight loss can be an indirect manifestation of hyperventilation that should be also taken care of. Um, or you can think about like the possibility of a patient having hyperventilation. That is one of the problems. Uh, we do have other problems with uh, conciliating sleep. Um, so a sleep disorder has to do with, mom, I cannot go to sleep. I'm, I'm afraid or I'm tired. So um, this is, uh, could go from the psychological aspects of what the disease means. I'm sleeping, I'm gonna pass. Uh, while well, I'm sleeping, and this is something that we might face when we have the older patients, uh, the use of um, equipment. Now we are like all pro non-invasive uh, care of our patients with like the respiratory care. So BiPAP is a machine that you use in order to provide you with oxygen overnight when your oxygen levels sort of drop. And uh, there's some patients that don't like it, particularly the small ones, they don't like it. So they don't sleep well, but just because it's this fight between the parents and, the, and themselves trying to find out. So in that regard, it is important for the parents to know that is not one single mask that the patients can use in this equipment. This has to be customized. And part of the visit, uh, when you are gonna go to your multidisciplinary clinics, is just to assess this. Make sure that you know the equipment that your son or daughter is using is like they, they appropriate for them. And this is something that definitely can be worked up with uh, the providers. Sleep disorders um, for both the patient and the caregiver are, are definitely present. Um, and it, they're present in you know, all three types of SMA. Um, the caregivers, unfortunately, um, you know, are interrupted throughout the night uh, because their child uh, wakes up, uh, for the most part, uh, complaining of discomfort. Um, and a lot of the times the discomfort really is coming from the fact that you know, us, they don't really understand what they're feeling. Uh, you, c you have to remember a lot of these children are uh, you know, in their young ages, and so they, they can't quite communicate. Um, so mom or dad has to figure out, or the caregiver has to figure out, you know, what exactly is going on, maybe rotate the child, uh, make you feel a little more comfortable. But any time that, you know, you, you have a family complain about the fact that they're keeping, you know, they're, they're woken up at, during the night several times, um, probably the, the most uh, reasonable thing to do is to get a sleep study to see what it is that this child's sleep pattern is during the night. Um, and that alone may help understand if there is a problem, you know, how do we go about addressing the problem? You know, um, as we, we know that there, there's measures that we can be uh, used during the evening to facilitate the breathing pattern of these babies. Uh, if they're babies or, you know, if they're older children, um, then you're gonna have a battle of understanding that the child needs that, um, and that those aids to sleep better at night. But at the same time, is the child going to accept those, uh, you know, those aids? Um, and so I think eventually as um, both, you know, parents and uh, the child understands the, the you know, the disease progression and what makes them feel better, they eventually do um, accept that they have to have a, you know, a, a support aid to help them uh, sleep better during the night. And, you know, sleep disorders for, for caregivers, it's a huge issue uh, in the SME community. And many, many parents report how, um, you know, they're usually, their sleep pattern at night 
it's only a couple hours at a time, three hours at a time. Um, and of course, that's going to affect them for their daily life, uh, uh, especially if, you know, they both work or one of them does not work uh, and stays home and takes care of the child. Um, and so it can be, uh, it can be a, an incredible chronic issue for both the patient and uh, the caregiver. So sleep disorders for both uh, the patient and the caregiver is a, um, a serious issue when it comes to um, understanding what happens during the night for these patients. Um, we get many parents who uh, complain uh, consistently about the fact that um, they're, they do not have a good night's sleep. And it's usually because they have to get up during the night to help their child um, to either change their position uh, to hopefully make them feel better in any way because for the most part they wake up screaming um, and if it's a young child and can't really express what they're feeling it is very difficult for the caregiver to uh, figure out what, but eventually they they learn um, that it is most likely a positional uh, situation that they have to rotate the baby and maybe they can get another you know hour or two of straight sleep before they're woken up again um, so so, you know, um, sleep disorders for both the caregiver and the patient, um, it is a very serious concern uh, in the SMA community. And there are measures that uh, can be used uh, to, to hopefully uh, um, assist these problems or to alleviate the problem. And uh, one of them, if it, it's if, uh, you know, there is a sleep disorder going on or cons uh, consistently uh, the, the parent is being uh, waken up during the evening. Um, if the child is young enough and is a newly diagnosed patient, um, you know, let's get some studies going. Uh, let's figure out if it's really uh, something that's happening in their sleep pattern at night that is affecting, uh, you know, their, their ability to sleep. Then, if that's the case, uh, then there are measures that can be, that can be provided for these families. Uh, the caregiver, what are they going to need? They're going to need time to sleep. Uh, but if the baby is sleeping through the night, then that's the time that they get to sleep. Um, so there's definitely ways to do this. And the older the child gets, the better they feel about uh, once a decision is made about how to assist them in their, in their sleeping pattern. Um, it'll be much better for them and they feel better and so will for the parents or caregiver. Fortunately, you know, the patients are more and more aware of what could be the symptoms uh, that might manifest with like uh, hypoventilation at night. So one definitely is the frequent awakenings during the daytime, during the nighttime. The other one is like uh, headaches uh, in the morning where they wake up um, as well as increased tiredness or uh, the need of frequent naps during the daytime. So sometimes the parents bring up these uh, issues, but sometimes they don't. So it's very important as, as a community of neurologists just to ask this question or like the pulmonologist that should be part of the multidisciplinary clinic uh, care. Uh, to ask these questions because the parents might not bring that up and those could be secondary manifestations that you are like um, not um, ventilating adequately overnight. Uh, so that is uh, another uh, issue that I would think that sh we should address.